Hey guys, Matt Walsh here from ESPN Footy Pod, uh, bringing you a a bonus episode this week. Jake Michaels, uh, good to speak with you so soon after the main podcast. Yep, um, always good to be chatting. Unfortunately, it's probably not something we want to be talking about today, but um, I think it's very important that we do we do address it and we do speak about what's going on in the world of football at the moment. Yeah, it would be nice to be in better circumstances. Rowan Connolly, uh, nice to speak with you as well. Good to have you back on the podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, it's um, as Jake alluded to, it's not something you obviously want to have to discuss in depth and and uh, it's not something that we uh, want to have to delve into. But uh, look, the recent Taylor Walker uh, racism claims and apology and the way that the media landscape has dealt with this uh, probably deserves a bit of attention from us. And I know that it's kind of well, the three white males sitting here discussing racism is never going to be the most uh, optically perfect viewing or listening, but um I think we've got a responsibility, guys, that enough's enough with, with racism in footy and, and the time for lip service is done. And Rowan, you wrote a piece for us on ESPN.com.au forward slash AFL, pretty much alluding to this and the fact that it's AFL has got a long history of just sort of twiddling its thumbs when it comes to these sorts of things. And it's, it's time that we actually walk the walk. Absolutely. And uh, the thing that I found really striking about this whole episode is the degree of anger in the Indigenous playing fraternity. And look, it's made me angry witnessing not just what happened, but the aftermath of it and some of other people's reactions. And they are they are absolutely seething. And uh, I think they've got every right to be because, uh, you know, a lot of the racist incidents we've talked about over the last few years, they've been stereotypically, you know, a spectator abusing a player so it becomes very easy for a player like Taylor, to, Taylor Walker to sort of mouth the platitudes and criticise someone who he's never going to have to deal with. When that uh, racism is being displayed by someone inside the tent, what mm. that effectively says to the Indigenous playing fraternity is it's all empty symbolism. It's all hollow words because there's clearly a feeling that, you know, if, if you don't say something directly to an Indigenous player or a player from another racial group it doesn't matter it's only if they hear it um and this really to me has reaffirmed just how far not only the game but australia as a country has got to go um i heard a, a snippet of uh dermot Burton, for example talking on fox footy about this and for dermot it was all about you know we've got to rally around taylor walker and we've got to you know show him our care and he also made the comment uh, Taylor Walker does not have a racist bone in his body. Well, I'm sorry, Dermot. He does. He does because he was capable of coming up with a disgusting insult like yeah. that. That sort of slur is in your mind yeah. and you're thinking about it before you say it. That is racism. You, that and is why, racism. Do we ha- why do we have to rally around Taylor Walker? Why aren't we rallying behind Robbie Young? Why was Robbie Young left to rally around Taylor Walker in that apology video? Well, yeah, exactly. I, I thought it was, you know, it, it looked like a, you know, slickly produced bit of spin. You know, they showed Tex choking up before he started talking. Robbie's there to put a consoling hand on his shoulder. Um, I've seen, look, on, on my own footyology website, we had a piece by Angela Pippos, terrific piece. She's an ambassador for the Crows. And she was, um, you know, giving plaud- due plaudits to the official who called Walker out on this. Mm. I have run that on my Facebook page. There are now over 800 comments and half of them I wouldn't dare repeat on this podcast, but they, above and beyond just the plainly disgusting ones, they show this repeated uh, failure to get people to get their heads around the issue, which is people still have this concept that racism is when you directly uh, make a racial taunt at someone to their face. It's not. It's what you think. It's how you feel. Mm. And if I was Eddie Betts, I mean, we saw how tearful Eddie was talking about this. Can you imagine his reaction when he was told what Walker had done? It'd be like, I've shared a social life and a training track and a playing ground and a locker room with this guy for six years. Mm. And he's come out and he's mouthed all the right platitudes when I've been abused. And then behind my back, that's what he actually thinks. And Look, I've received messages from a couple of other Indigenous players. They are absolutely livid, and I do not blame them a bit. And the AFL, for their part, 
look, sorry, it's a bit of a ramble, but we've seen things like the Heredia Lumumba episode where he was, his credibility was systematically undermined by the club he was at. We've seen um, other players, uh, Jared uh, Wilkinson. Um, so sorry for the uh, Gold Coast Suns. He went through a similar thing. You know, it's fine to pay lip service to all this stuff, but clearly the AFL and its clubs and the AFL brethren, if you like, the boys club, they don't actually think it's a serious issue. And I think this episode's been the proof of it. Mm. My heart breaks for Eddie and watching him have to go on to AFL 360 once, twice a year to have to confront this sort of stuff is, I, I, I cannot put into words how awful it's embarrassing. It it's embarrassing that he actually has to do it. And the fact that the burden is with him to continue to try and peacefully sort of say that, that this isn't on. And, and, and it's, Honestly, I tried to I tried to to quote tweet the video and 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 come up with some words that were just like we're going to make a uh, you know make a difference at least to the people that follow me on Twitter and I couldn't even do that I couldn't couldn't put into words that that just the the way that this has developed and the way that it's just the same cycle repeating mm. over and over again and and we had a chat um, Jake with uh, one of our colleagues um, a couple of hours ago and and he said something that really stuck with me not being racist isn't enough anymore you need to be anti-racist because we've had not being racist and, and, and thinking that's enough, but, but you've got to be anti-racist now. And, and honestly, the AFL needs to almost come out and say, this is the watershed moment. This is the moment where racism is zero tolerance, whether you play in the AFL, whether you play at, at local leagues, whether you're a commentator or someone on, on a commentary panel, that's it. You don't get a second chance now. And I think it would be unfair to, to lump Taylor Walker into that and say, well, you've done it and now you can't play again. But I think the point now is you draw a line and you say, if you're a racist, you do not play and you are not involved in this game at all. Australia wants to believe that it's not a racist country. And it's not to say that every Australian is a racist because that's not true either. But on a whole, Australia is a racist country. And we haven't quite got over that yet. We might think we have. We haven't grasped it, Jake. We don't. And I, in, in the last 10, just look at the last 10 years, forget the, forget the history of, of the, we're just looking at the AFL here. Just look at the last 10 years. How many racial incidents have we had in the last 10 years alone? There's no. been heaps of them. And, and there's one that comes, that springs to mind. And, and Rowan wrote about it in the piece about, um, about Tex when he came together with Travis Boak from Port and they came together to, to stand up for, for an issue that happened with, with Eddie Betts. And it's like, what does that mean? What well, does the, that the, actually mean? It, I mean, this is the fundamental issue. We as a country do not accept that we are racist. It, it, it's a word that immediately raises the hackles and, and people get this defensive paranoia about conceding that we are a racist country. And what it means is that the reaction to a, an incident of racism is stronger and more filled with emotion for these people than the actual act of racism. Mm. And, and this, is, this is just wrong because until we're prepared to concede that, how can you possibly um, do anything about your attitudes if you're in denial that they exist? Like, what, you know, why other countries have come to grips with the fact that they have a racist past. You know, New Zealand's talked about it. America's talked about it. Now, they certainly, America certainly has its share of, of race issues. But I think even they have an acceptance of the history of racism that mm. exists. We are so hung We're up. Living on, in denial. We are in denial because we are so hung up on seeing ourselves as this laid back, easygoing, Fair go for every everyone. That's what we aspire to be, but yeah. we cannot actually be that until we own our past. And people refuse to do that. You just have to look at how uh, the reactions came to be. You know, put your arms around Taylor Walker to sort of see where the priorities lie and where the, the deficiencies in society clearly are. Yeah, and the biggest thing for me, well, there's a couple of things, but one that really stood out to me, and, and you hear this each time we have an incident like this where the offending party says something along the lines of, I need to go away and educate myself. And that's what that's what Taylor Walker said um, in, his, in his apology. 
what I what I'm just flabbergasted by, and, and I don't understand what that means. Can someone actually explain to me what he means when he says I need to educate myself? And look, I don't want to have a, I don't want to have a shot at him because he, he, you know he's made a huge mistake and he's copying it and he's rightly copying it. So I'm not going to just keep piling and piling it on. But but in all honesty, that that's just a cop out. I got to go and educate myself. You've you've got to know it shouldn't it should be common sense to be a decent human being and not say things like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the great ironies in that video was that he said, I need to educate myself. But then in the next breath or before that, he said, I'm going to be leaning on Robbie, you know. So, and and this is what Tony Armstrong, former AFL player and, and commentator now and an Indigenous man, he made that uh, observation. Why is it beholden upon Indigenous yeah. players mm. to wrap their arms around these guys and show them the way? Are yeah. they not capable of doing this themselves. Now, Jake, I agree with you. I hate the way it's framed as education, as in you're studying for a trigonometry exam or something. You know, this isn't about learning information. It's, it's about being a decent human being. But I'll tell you, in practical terms, what that education, in inverted commas, what it actually consists of. You know what it is? It's nothing more than actually listening to these people when they are telling you about their hurt and their pain and their suffering. They're things like listening to Eddie Betts when he tells you about his 49-year-old grandfather who died in a prison cell because he was turned away from his doctor. Things like this. These are the stories that if you listen to and you see the raw emotion of an Eddie Betts, you cannot help but take that message on board. And the refusal of people to acknowledge them mm. says to me that people just shut their ears and they throw out the same old spin and the same old lines and they think, okay, that's it. Let's move on. You don't move on until you own it. The, um, for, for me, the onus is it's now firmly on the league because we just go through the same cycles every week. Um, and and it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to see because every week someone, an AFL player will be, will post on Instagram a screenshot of a message they'll receive and there'll be racist abuse in it every single week, almost mm. almost every single week without fail. And you can just tell the same reactions are going to happen. The club will come out and say, we condemn all racism, you know, and we will find this member and we will take the membership away from them. The AFL will come out and say, we condemn this. And and, and it's, 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 it's just like the wheels just turning in the same spot. Well, let's it's be honest. If, 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 if you're a member or whoever, and you're saying that and, and you're posting that crap on social media and they might, they may well come to you and rip up your membership. You can still find a way to get to a game. Yeah. But the, the, the fans isn't, isn't the point that I'm trying to get to. The, the point that I'm trying to get to is that the AFL needs to stop spinning the wheels, so to speak, and actually get some traction and, and do something and, and a line in the sand mm. where we're clearly at that point, surely. Mm. Well, I, I agree. Know, well, yeah. I, I, sorry, I, I'm firm on this, and, and call me, call me harsh, call me whatever. But I, I don't. I truly believe in some instances, a, there are times where people should be offered a second chance. But I don't believe this is one of those times. We we know how damaging damaging this is because we hear it regularly from the indigenous community on how how tough it is to swallow and hear that those comments on a regular basis. I don't understand why we need to have have strikes or, or warnings or, or whatever anyone any player any commentator any coach anyone in, to do with football in any capacity one strike you're out and i don't and i don't understand why it needs to be any more lenient than that well, there's a, yeah there, there's a big elephant in the room here guys i think with the afl and, and their power to do stuff and it's that the hypocrisy is evident. It's evident in the the power base of the AFL. And, you know, this name comes up frequently in these discussions, but Eddie Maguire. Eddie Maguire basically lost the presidency of Collingwood because of his absolute failure to recognise what racism was and that it existed in his club. The well-documented stumbles, as they're sort of euphemistically called, over the years. He lost the presidency of his club because of that. So you turn on the TV and watch a game. What do you see on the camera? You see the CEO of the AFL, Gil McLaughlin, hobnobbing with Eddie Maguire in a super box. Eddie's still a big, powerful figure in the game. So people at a grassroots level look at that and they, they say, well, how can the AFL can't be serious about this mm -hmm. because this guy is still very much one of the 
the big figures in the game. And yet he's been as guilty of, of racist comments over the years as anyone. People will say that it's harsh to suggest a zero tolerance policy or a one strike policy, as you say, Jake, but <laughs> it's not hard to grasp the idea of just not being a terrible person and not no. being racist. And if you're sitting at home or in your car and thinking, oh, geez, one strike, geez, that's, that's not enough. That's a, that's a problem. That's the problem in itself. If you think you need a warning or two, then you've got the then you've got the problem. These you shouldn't adults, need any warning for these this. These are adults. These are not five, six, seven year olds yeah. who are in prep one year one, year two, learning about Australia and its past. You know the the worst. The one of the other wor- things that I I struggle or, or am struggling to get my head around is um, with with Taylor Walker. He he's, he's obviously he's been a, and playing football professional football for a long time. He's he's been spending day after day with players like Eddie Betts and Indigenous players at at, at Adelaide. More so than people than a lot of people in the community, you know. I'll be honest. I, I go long periods of time where I you know especially now, but I I I don't you know we may not we may not see spend time personally. With, with Indigenous people. So for him, he should be more aware of how difficult and damaging this is than the average idiot that posts a stupid... Not to, not to um, say anyone doing posting anything on social media is fine, mm. but they've, they're just idiots that have got no idea. If anyone should have an idea, it's another professional football player that's actually in the spotlight and seeing how difficult it is behind the scenes, where, scenes when the cameras are turned off, and actually how Eddie is... is um, is dealing with these issues. And for him to actually come out and say, going back to what you said before, Ron, that must be, and I'm not speaking on behalf of Eddie or any Indigenous player, but I, I would imagine that would be 10 times harder hearing it from someone like Taylor than just a regular fan. There's absolutely no question about that. And what you say is absolutely spot on. I mean, the percentage of Indigenous people as a total of the Australian popula- population is something like 3.3%. The representation of Indigenous players in the AFL is 11%. Every single AFL player mixes, plays with, trains with every an day. Indigenous player. They are aware of the stories. They are aware of their difficulties. They already do training programs, welfare work. They see this. They see far more evidence of it and they get far more education than does the average member of society. And all that has made absolutely zero difference. And here's the scary part for me, that that is Taylor Walker at the higher level with the benefit of that education and that training. How much must this be going on at grassroots level in suburban leagues, in bush leagues? And we're not just talking about Indigenous people here. We're talking about people uh, people from a Muslim background. We're talking about, you know, Sudanese immigrants, uh, people of Asian cultures, all yeah. these people, they cop this as part of their day-to-day lives. And at that grassroots level, the sorts of people that are pre- prepared to object them, subject yeah. them to this abuse, can do so with impunity because they know they're not going to be hauled across the, the coals and shamed on a, nas- a national media stage as a result. That is the really scary thing. That is the, why the AFL has to be yeah. really firm on this. But again... The AFL's ability to be firm on this is compromised by the evidence of its own refusal to walk the walk. The thing that uh, I sort of had to think about this today and, and, and over the weekend is the way that the AFL came down on hard and quickly umpire abuse has been more telling and more, um, I don't know what the word is, more focused, more uh, more intense than it has been on racism. And not to say that, um, you know, umpire abuse is, is a bad thing, but like the way it shows it can do it as a league, it can come down hard on, well, on fans in, in this case, um, but it can come down hard if it wants to. And, and to me, it just like you say, Rowan, it just hasn't looked like they want to. Well, it, it, you'd even argue that with the penalty for Walker, really. I mean, it was yeah. 1999, 22 years ago, when Peter Everett was suspended for four games for racially abusing Scott Chisholm. Mm. Are we saying that 22 years later, with the benefit of those shifting attitudes, with the benefit of greater knowledge, more empathy for the situation of Indigenous players in the game and Indigenous people, that a transgression of those dimensions is worth only an extra two weeks? That sort of says to me, we don't think it's 
that much more of an issue than it was 22 years ago. And that's yeah. wrong. And no doubt the Indigenous playing fraternity, uh, they steadfastly believe that that is a, a manifestly inadequate penalty. My well, greatest thing I fear, wonder though is, and I agree, I think he should have got a, a, a harsher penalty. But even if you give him a, even if you give him twelve weeks, is it really going to stop people saying these? Like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a, it's a one strike and out. I, I really just feel like a penalty, whether it's four weeks, six weeks, ten weeks. Eventually, you're coming back. Yeah, don't well, do I'm, it. Yeah, I mean the other element to this too, and I, you know, talking about some of those comments I've been reading, there is a lot of, I've seen a, a petition for Adelaide supporters to sign to, you know, support text. A lot of the comments that I, were, I was reading on that article were of the nature, what about the official who dobbed him in? You know, so people see the issue here not as being that someone stood up and objected to racism. They see it more of an issue that this guy dobbed and that it wasn't dealt with in-house that it was leaked. And, and yeah. what does that say? It says fundamentally that any sort of racism is okay if you can and, get And you away need to sweep it. it under the carpet. Yeah. And, and this would happen, as you said before, at lower leagues, but even in, even, in the, even in the AFL. I have no doubt that this happens regularly. It's just rare that someone from a club has had, had the guts because we know how people would react. And as you're saying, the way it's, it's perceived that he's dobbed um, a star player of the club in, that, so they would sweep it under the carpet. Why would they jeopardise their future and their their career? But this this is a watershed moment because we haven't really seen it come like this before. Well, this is my greatest fear, Jake, is that we, we're saying this and you hope that it will be. But, you know, in 1993, we saw Nicky Winmar, you know, that famous photograph points to his skin and you think, hey, maybe this is a watershed moment for racism in sport and racism in footy. That photo or that incident took place when I was just months old. And and here I am, twenty eight years later, and and we're still discussing yeah. the fact that this is this no, is happening. You're right. is still and, happening and, and showing point. that photograph every every year around the Dreamtime game. It, I'm sorry, but that does that does crap all. You know, we we yeah, need well, to the, do a lot yeah. more. No, you're right. The the Sir Doug Nichols rounds, um, they really to me now also look hollow because you think of what happens in those rounds. You know, yeah. we we get the tribal dances and we get the Guernseys. And, and the clubs, the clubs sit down and they have the the person who designed the Guernsey tell the story. And and like you say, Jake, before they are exposed to this much more than us. These players, these the staff, the coaches, the media, like we are lucky to be able to sort of see this stuff and get the stories of this stuff. Mm. But we, what I, the point I was going to make there was Sorry. what we what we don't hear is the unpleasant stuff. And surely, if we are intent on learning about this and becoming better, we need to hear about the unpleasant stuff. But Every year, so Doug Nichols round is this sort of celebration in inverted commas. Well, you know, it's like Australia Day for Indigenous people. That's hardly a celebration for them, is it? I mean, talking about watershed moments, we haven't even mentioned this, but how could what happened to Adam Goods not have been a watershed moment mm. in the issue of racism in football? Now, you know, it, it looks worse and worse with each passing year how he was effectively drummed out of the game uh, with an AFL sitting back and unprepared to take any strong action for fear of getting particular people and stakeholders offside to the point where they finally came out and apologised for that lack of inaction three years subsequently. And then uh, is it going to happen again? Well, it looks like it's going to happen again. And but people wonder why he doesn't want anything to do with the, the AFL Hall of Fame. Well, no, why well, would exactly. You? But, I mean, th this is... This is where it's at. We now have a stark divide between the Indigenous yeah. playing fraternity in our game and white people. And it's because what Taylor Walker has done has reaffirmed for Indigenous people that they are other. They are not really one of us. Mm. And, and like I said at the start, we are critically conscious being three white men sitting here discussing this. But as far as I'm concerned, it, it starts and it's going to end with white Australia. And we need to be the change that we, that we want to see. Just on that though, and yeah, you, we are, you're right. We've mentioned that a couple of times throughout this podcast, but just because that's the case, it doesn't mean that I'm not sitting here genuinely disappointed and upset by what we continually have to talk about and hear yeah. and, and, you know, and, and that's me. I can't imagine how, how difficult it must be yeah. for the Indigenous community and the Indigenous, Indigenous playing group to have to constantly talk about this 
Mm-hmm. And going right back to the start, it, it's it's an embarrassment that the story is Tex and how we support Taylor Walker through this, as opposed to Robbie Young and how we support Robbie Young and the Indigenous community around this. If, if I can present one positive note here, the thing I've really noticed with the comment commentary on it and the sorts of comments on social media is most of the more unpleasant comments or the comments just betraying complete ignorance are, in my view, have tended to come from older people. Now, you know, I'm a lot older than you guys. I'm, I'm wrapped to hear you talking the way you're talking. I'm finding that younger people do have a better take on this. And hopefully this is something like, for example, societal attitudes towards, say, homosexuality, which will change mm-hmm over time through the generations. But, geez, it's been a, a slog getting there. And and someone like me who, you know, you mentioned Nicky Winmar, Matt. Uh, I wasn't three months old. I was there covering the game. <laughs> I was 28. You know, that should have been a pivotal moment in my life too. But here I am, double that age now, and yeah. effectively not much has changed. Well, that is profoundly depressing. Let's hope that uh, in, in another 28 28- years when I'm your age that you are now <laughs> hopefully we've made some progress because um look it's 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 grim and, and as we said off the top it's not the circumstance we want to be coming together for a bonus pod but it's obviously important to talk about and discuss and uh hopefully you listening at home have, have, have been able to either agree with us or take something away from it because you know it's, it starts with us and and the industry as a whole needs to get better and uh surely we're now on the track to do that and the next time, you know, the next time you're with a mate and, and someone might make a, a, a comment which might which might seem innocent, call them out on it, yeah. you know? Call them out. I'll be doing that. And we don't want to preach, but it's not preaching. It's just common decency. And you know what, Matt? I, I was just thinking, as you said that, we've seen uh, that campaign, for instance, with domestic violence, haven't we? A group of mates sitting around a yeah. table, someone yeah. makes a, a derogatory joke about his partner and someone else pulls him up on it. That is one thing the AFL could do because that's the next step, isn't it? Being prepared to stand up and call this crap out, even if your mates are saying it. Enough, enough. Yeah, yeah. It's, because um, all it does is is then, even if it's in, even if you see it as and you think it's innocent and you you aren't racist, but you just happen to say a, a little joke here and there, all that does is eventually get passed down the generations, and we never ever ever get rid of it. Yeah, I think. Um... A lot to a lot to sort of think about this week, and it's been it's been nice to sort of chat it out with you fellas, and uh, to guess so to to bring a footy quote in there, John Kennedy, do something, AFL. Yeah, it's a do shame something. because the seasons we spoke about a couple of days ago, but or yesterday, it seems how so much has happened in the last twenty four hours. But you know, you got four teams at the top split by two points. We want to be talking about the football and getting excited for finals, and it's a, it's just a shame that we have to keep. Um, Having these, having these, mm. um, but it's important to pop same. up. It's more important. It's more important because it's a societal issue. Yeah. So yeah, we but we want to be talking about the football. Um, it's a shame that we have to be talking about this. Uh, Rowan, thanks again, and and to those who haven't read Rowan's piece, uh, ESPN.com.au slash AFL. It's a uh, it's a must read, really. Um, so thank you for writing that, and thanks for joining us on the podcast today. Cheers, guys.